On this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast, I got an out-of-office notification from Sean. Welcome to the Crushing Debt Podcast with your host, Florida attorney Sean Yesner, where our goal is to help you get rid of the financial bullies in your life. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. My name is Sean Yesner, owner and founder of Yesner Law, and welcome back your financial coach, George Corbello. How are you doing, George? Sean, how are you? Your uh, AI double here is doing extremely well uh, <laughs> while you're on vacation, so thank you for uh, for uh, computing. <laughs> yeah, so what, what the heck are we talking about? As this episode comes out, I will have just gotten back from vacation. We're going, taking a week and going to Arizona, and so as I'm recording this, I haven't quite been there yet. Not yet, coming But up. as the episode is released, I will have just come back from it, so I'll probably be crying as I listen to this episode <laughs> in, the, in the car, remembering all the fun times we had in Arizona. But what we thought would be cool to talk about, especially now, I didn't realize April is Financial Literacy Month, so... Welcome to another month of learning about money, uh, learning to have more money in your pocket, uh, and making sure that we understand uh, the ups and downs when it comes to fi- our finances. It's, uh, it's a cr- crazy world out uh, there. It's, it's more, more knowledge you have is better. So we've done a couple of episodes on vacations mm-hmm. and, and vacation debt and that kind of stuff, but we haven't really ever done an episode that talks about what do I do with my business if right. I want to go on vacation. So we thought that would be kind of a cool topic to cover. Um, before we get there, I do want to mention Mark Purvis, one of our two sponsors. And so Mark has LegacySpotlight.com, and so you can tell all those stories. So after this wonderful vacation that we're going to take to Arizona, I can come back and record all the stories of, of what we did while we're away and why we went there and what we found and what happened and all that kind of stuff. And so, again, Mark Purvis, he is our editor. He's been with us since the very beginning, makes us sound really, really good. But if you want to capture stories for your future generations, uh, then I would go to LegacySpotlight.com. So, getting ready to go away on, on a vacation for literally a week. One of the things that we thought about is what do we need to plan for the business, Uh, And so one of the first questions that came up in my mind, and one of the first things that I was told not to do, (laughs) I am not allowed to bring my laptop on vacation with me. Duh. Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, so, <laughs> But I'm going to be away for a week. It's a vacation. It's a, You're not expected to bring work with you. So regardless if you're your own owner or, or business owner, as well as a corporate person, uh, it is kind of rude to your spouse and kids if all you're worried about in your vacation itself is work. Then how do I handle an emergency at the office if I don't have a computer on me? Ah, so last time I checked, a lot of those hotels do have like, you know, centers that you can log in, uh, use the computer. It's not convenient, uh, but I guess the question is, are you a heart surgeon or anything like that, that anyone's uh, life-threatening thing is, is going to happen while you're on vacation for a few days? I, I really don't think so, no. <laughs> I'm just trying to be a little bit exaggerating here. but <clears throat> you're, it's... you're making me feel not as important <laughs> as I used to. All I'm saying is, uh, first thing, you know, part of the vacation itself is not only taking the time off from work, uh, but being present um, and enjoying that time. So that's, uh, I would agree. You can bring some type of electronic if you well, want I'll have to. My, I'll have my phone on. Of me. course. I imagine if, you, you know, unless you're in the middle of like the Bermuda Triangle, I doubt you, you'll have access to at least the phone to be able to connect to someone in the office. But I, great, great question from a business standpoint. I mean, if, uh, Sean, you have people who, who kind of work with you. Yeah. And uh, work for you, I would say. You know, this guy's a uh, big time here. <laughs> but having those things in place, what are, what are you planning to do as part of your vacation planning to kind of let everyone else in the office know? Well, so one of the things that I may or may not do is either schedule a time when they know, okay, I'll have this half hour block open if you need to call me about something. I'll open up a half hour block. Maybe it'll be while we're getting ready for bed or or just waking up in the morning, or maybe it'll be, you know, when we don't have anything in particular planned. But the other thing I thought about that is should I or would you give your itinerary or at least some portion of the itinerary to people that rely on you so they know how they can get a hold of you in case there's an emergency? I I like the idea. It gives people the 
opportunity to kind of like, hey, Sean's in the, uh, you know, he's going and, and doing some surfing. So it might not be, a, he's probably not close to his phone at that point. There could be opportunities from that to, to kind of say, is leaving the people that information allows them to kind of make like, is this important enough? Right. to reach out to the boss, you know, to bother him in his vacation. That, that Those are those are things I'd imagine you're worried about in regards to, like, can we get a hold of you? But for me, it's more of, like, everyone else, do they, you know, can they make the decision to go, like, is this important enough to reach out to you during that time? Well, I think that's where we need to kind of set some ground rules. And I probably do need to sit down with the staff and say, if it's this, this, or this, call me. Right. If it's this, this, or this, handle it. Right. I don't want to be called. Empowering your employees is important as part of that. And, and a lot of folks, that's probably the reason why they don't take vacations, because it's like, who, who, who does the business? Who's going to pay something? Who's going to manage these, the clients if I'm unavailable in those oh, moments? I, I am scared out of my mind that the law firm's going to be a week without any revenue. Now, I think the staff knows enough to do it, and I've got an associate attorney, and she's going to be mm-hmm. – she's actually working from here, from the office. She normally works remote. And so uh, we actually have a meeting set up as soon as you and I are done recording. Well, there you go. I'm going to meet with my associate attorney, and we're going to go over, you know, here's clients we got to bring on. we got appointments we got to set, appointments that she would not normally take she's now going to have to take because the law firm's got to make money while I'm out. And that's the idea. I think if as a boss or uh, as a, you know, uh, kind of your own business owner, if you're not having these conversations, if you're not um, having those conversations with the rest of your team, you're definitely leaving yourself open for, for that, where, you, again, nothing gets done or you're not making money. We have to put ourselves, uh, put our business in a position where people can be empowered to make those kind of decisions. Now, again, you may not be able to like, hey, I sold the, <laughs> sold the business right. while you were gone. But, you know, I did reach out to certain clients. We were able to sign certain things. We were able to, you know, progress on some of the projects. That's the thing we want to do as part as as business owners is to really empower the right individuals to be able to, again, be you while you're not here. While I'm not here. And I think how long you're gone is also kind of important. So I'm kind of cheating because (laughs) I will literally be gone for one week. We leave on a Friday. We come back Thursday night the next, the, the following week. But. There's a Saturday, Sunday in there. Yep. I think Monday is Easter Monday. Yep. Um, or Sunday's Easter Sunday, so the holidays on Monday. So really, all I'm missing is Friday, which normally Fridays are light days. I don't do a lot of work on mm-hmm. Fridays anyway. Mm-hmm. So really, I'm missing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's okay. It's still, so it's still I'll three be gone days. for a week, but I'll be out of the office for three days. <laughs> so you planned you planned accordingly and you planned very well there to, so that the level of stress as a business owner is minimized. So again, right. smart, smart man. It's, you're not wrong in how you're thinking. The one thing that I would challenge you and any business owner in that situation itself is how would you handle it if it was a two-week vacation? What changes in your business model and your business plan would you need to make so that Sean could take you know that European uh, tour <laughs> for three months, and uh, and well, three months I was exaggerating, maybe three months, but three weeks where you don't have to worry about you know how the business is going to run because you know again it's humming, it's doing what it needs to do. Well, and I think that's where we need to get, or that's where we want to get as business owners is mm-hmm. get to a point where the business can run without you, right, and still make money. Jason Avery, who we're going to try to get on the show, yep. was just on a cruise for a week, and literally a cruise so totally out of touch i mean i'll at least still be in the continental u.s so people will get a hold of me if they if they really really need to but jason was gone for an entire week and the business continued to function without him that's the idea i think as a business owner it's important to be able to think about it young business owners or if you're solo you know on your own itself what are you doing to make sure that if you're not working, that somehow the business is still making money? I love the action coach. Remember the, what was the quote we said? Uh, if your money is not making, or if your business is not making money when you're sleeping, yeah, is not, it truly a bit, or if you're not there, it's not truly a right. business. So we, we definitely need to, we need to have those things. Young business owners totally get it. We we're working hard, making sure the business is successful. The products are going out. Services are at, at high quality. But if you're doing it for five, 10 years, and you're still not able to take that vacation, I would say we need to revisit the, you know, the plan to kind of uh, put those things in place. What about paying bills? Mm-hmm. So here's the interesting thing for me is that you know, as an attorney, I've got 
the bank account for the law firm, but I've also got a trust account. I've also got a Florida Bar trust account. And when an attorney gets in trouble, the reason that they get in trouble more often than not is something goofy with the trust account, some some error in trust accounting. So one of the things I'm trying to figure out what to do, and, and I actually already called the bank, and so I think I have the solution here, but... What if the law firm needs to pay someone some money while I'm out, and right now I'm the only signer on the bank account? Ah, so once again, that still still goes back to: uh, is there anyone else in the organization itself that can do that? And if if it can it well, and the thing is too, from a lawyer standpoint, right? If could that settlement or payment wait a week? Till you get back, are those options? Is there anything that's critical enough that it says like, well, if he's not here on Wednesday, you know, you're in contempt of, you know, I'm throwing out law and order things. You're in contempt (laughs) of court and we're going to throw you in jail. Copper. You're in contempt. (laughs) Exactly. I always wanted to say that. Come on. No, you're in contempt. So, you know, again, what I I actually reached out to the bank and what we're going to do, I could add one of my employees to like the operating account for the law firm. Right. When I get back, I can take them off. Yep. Like Mm. a temporary, right? Like putting them on. Temporary. Yeah, but the, that's a lot of paperwork just right. to get out of town. Gotcha. Um, the other thing I could do is leave them a couple of signed checks, blank checks. But I, Ooh, I, I wouldn't know, be worried about that. I, I trust my staff. No, no. I would just put what if, but, you know, you know what, yeah, if. what if they lose them? What right. if somebody comes in and steals? What if? But what the bank told me, what my banker told me is I could call her and say, hey, we need to issue a check to such and such vendor for such and such amount. The bank would issue a, a bank check or a cashier's ah, check, okay, and then someone from my office could just run in and pick it up. Oh, uh, see, now that's that's a nice option as well. So that's didn't know that that's that's something that can be done. Is that standard practice, or is it kind of I, maybe with just your bank? I might. I don't know. I think it would Let's be standard that out. amongst the banks, but if not, you know, I can introduce you to my banker. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> we have a referral partner there opportunity go. there. But that's a great idea if you think about it, um, and that's available <clears throat> through your institution. Uh, I would say instead of having to uh, put someone in temporarily or permanently as part of that to be able to pay the bill, that's that's an awesome idea. Now, yeah. again, if you're in the middle of a cruise, you might still be in that situation. It might be a little bit more difficult. But again, you're right. You know, I mean, there's not a lot of checks. And even if I got a check on, well, and again, because of Easter, mm-hmm. even if I got a check on Tuesday, it, it would probably get deposited Wednesday. Right. It would probably take a day or two to clear. So I'm not cutting checks on it till Friday or Monday the following week anyway. Right. Do you and, do you have standard days when you're just writing checks or is that kind of just whenever there's a check needed you're you're writing it? So typically that's actually something I probably need to look at implementing here at the firm, but typically the way that I do it, I pay payroll twice a month. Mm-hmm. I pay payroll on the 15th and at the end of the month. Which is another interesting issue. I've got to run payroll before I leave. Uh, yeah, that might be important. <laughs> but typically, I pay bills twice a month. I right. pay bills at, at every payroll. So when I do the first payroll, I pay the bills that have accumulated the first two weeks of the month. And then when I do the payroll at the end of the month, I pay the bills that have accumulated the second two weeks. And then, you know, track at the end of the month, I track, you know, that, that rent got paid and, right, right. and all the other, you know, stuff. And a lot of a lot of the uh, law firm's bills are on auto payments. So I don't even have to worry about, worry about I just, that kind of all stuff. I have to do is input them into into QuickBooks and and track them. But I pay payroll twice a month rather than every two weeks because I didn't want those two months out of the year where I'm scrambling right. for a three payroll month. So even though the paychecks themselves are a little bit more because I'm paying 24 times instead of 26 times, they're a lot more predictable right. twice a month. Makes sense. Um, but I've got to run payroll before I go, and that's probably a really good thing to implement is a set specific time every month when I'm going to do the accounting and do the billing. I think it makes it a lot easier when it comes to, again, running your business, because if you're trying to do these kind of things every day, so I, I, I get it, unless you're hiring an accountant who's going to you know be responsible in managing that, a lot of us you know, small business owners are doing all of these hats and doing all of these things. So we're always looking for efficiencies and we're looking for ways to be productive. But if you're trying to do 50 million things every day, you know, from CEO to CFO to, you know, father and dad, you know, all these other things itself, I think it's just make your life a little easier. That might be another way to be able to handle that. Like, you know, am I going to write a check in the middle of my vacation? Do I have to? Well, it's like, no, paying the bills is set uh, before or after, and you can make those arrangements to make sure that they still happen when you're not available. Well, and I think this is kind of goofy, but setting the autoresponder. 
You know, yeah. putting putting the expectation in the minds of the clients, in the minds of the Good vendors, point. in the minds of, in my case, opposing counsel, and letting them know, hey, I'm, I'm out of town for a week. Yep. And, and I've been doing that, so it's interesting. I schedule probably about. I don't know, three, four days out. Mm-hmm. So in other words, if you call, if in a normal month, if you call me today and say, hey, I want an appointment with Sean, you're three, four, five days out before I've got enough free time, time to on get the it. calendar. Gotcha. But with this vacation coming up, plus I've got a mediation tomorrow, yep. plus I've got something else coming up on Monday, plus I've got a trial. The Monday I get back, Jeez. I've got a trial. Okay. So I've already been, I've spent the last two weeks setting the expectation in the mind of people that are calling me asking for appointments to say, hey, next week is the last week I have before I go out of town, but I got a trial when I get back. I'm yep. going to be out of town for a week, blah, 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 blah. You may not be able to get appointment time with me until the end of April. And is that okay? And, and is that okay? Yeah. And if not, you know, we'll either we'll find something else or I'll try to squeeze you in. Or, right. And I get it. I mean, yeah, I want to be on vacation, but if I need to sacrifice a weekend to go on vacation or a weekend when I get back from vacation – so be it. Yeah, and I think that, I think it's important to be able to kind of set that precedent. This is where I, it goes back to the first question, like, should I bring my laptop? Here, here's the thing. If you're taking calls and doing things when you're on vacation, when you shouldn't be, that just tells your clients, it tells the people as well that, oh, Sean is available even on Sundays at night. Yeah. Or, you know, when you're supposed to have family time, you're you're still working itself. So obviously that has a personal impact to, you know, you're not being present and, and, and being available, but also sets, like, do you really want to tell all your clients, like, hey, I'm available at midnight, let's no. have that conversation. It's just no. not, it's not good business. And it, it, it'll hurt you in the long run when it comes well, to that. I, I don't know. So I use Gmail. Gmail has this really cool thing at the bottom where you can schedule emails to go out. So sometimes, if I'm battling insomnia or something, right, and right. I fire up the computer, what better thing to do than fire out some emails? I'll still set them to go out at like seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning, just so that the clients don't know I'm up at you know three. Makes sense. Out emails. No, and that's a great tip. Great tip there. Like, hey, you, you know, automating those and scheduling those so that you're not having to worry about them or getting that impression out there as well. I love I love the idea. So I would say, yep, sorry that you're dealing with that, you know, the insomnia piece, but yeah, you're not letting people know of it uh, as part yeah. of your communication. Although I haven't I haven't been dealing with it lately. That's but, good. That's but, good. It's a lot of me, bourbon, I'd imagine, me, we're helping me, you there, right? Bourbon, <laughs> uh, melatonin. Mel- <laughs> Interestingly go, the, enough. The, the little, healthy choice. Little tiny pill that you dissolve under your tongue. I love it. Melatonin has been working great for me. (laughs) So now we did do a previous, I don't know if it was we or if it was me, but there is a previous podcast episode. (laughs) It's it's 307 about crushing vacation. Definitely you then. So there you go. But I have my I have my two cents if you'd like it. But um, so there is some stuff about vacation debt and how not to incur vacation debt. But I thought this today's episode would be kind of from the opposite angle of what do we need to do to get our businesses ready? What do we need to do to get our finances ready to go away on vacation? So if we know there's going to be a week-long period of time or two-week long or month-long, whatever period of time, that money's not going to come in as fast as it would if we were actively working the business, what else would you do to sort of offset that? So, I mean, you can always, uh, as part of as a business owner, right, you're still referring. So, you know, maybe part of your vacation is meeting new referral business partners. So, you know, go to the bar. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm not going to an Arizona B&I meeting. <laughs> no, you don't have to I, do that. I love B&I. I'm a, I'm no, a, no, no, I'm no, no. <laughs> Long time member of BNI. I am not going to an Arizona BNI. Definitely, the, don't do that. But definitely, you know, always opportunities. You know, we're always meeting people. I look for opportunities to continue to just, you know, hey, what do you do? How do you do? Being friendly with the people that you that you meet. That's one thing. If you're going to have an extended period of, of vacation. <laughs> The questions we asked before, like, you know, is the business ready? Is there products that need to be made available? Do we have to increase production, decrease production of certain products or or services? Services wise, too, like, you know, again, who in my team can continue to be me as part of that, that getaway? So, again, if those things are not in place... Um, doesn't mean that you don't take the vacation, but I think you're right. The worry about, the, you know, maybe the business is not going to make money that week. question is, is that okay? Again, looking at your finances from a business standpoint, is it okay that, the you know, maybe there's not much business happening that week? Or at least set it up where maybe the business isn't going to make as much as if you're pumping everything out, but Correct. the business is still going to make some money. And you know, kind of the flip, as I say that, 
Why can't the business make as much money as if I'm the one still here working every day? Why can't, why don't we have the systems or you as the business owner, why don't you have the systems so that your business can make the same amount of money whether you're there or not? And that's the point. I think, you know, we talked about it before the, you know, is the business really working for you or are you working for the business? It's one of those kind of situations. We need to put the certain things in place. New business owners, these are things you have to think about as from right. a long term. But if you've been doing this for five, ten years, you know, do I have a business partner who can, you know, take those phone calls or, or the services that would need to be rendered? Is there someone we can trust and empower while we're away to be able to give them the opportunity? It's just building building that that kind of system in place so that I'm hoping one day you can be six months and your business right. is still working and still doing the things that are necessary. Well, Isn't that I, the goal? Yeah, although I think if I were to do like a six month vacation, I would have my laptop with me. <laughs> okay, I'll let you. I'll let you have it for that. Well, once for that. a week, maybe I'd log in <laughs> just to make sure everything's okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, a little different circumstance, but we'll allow you to take the laptop in. You know, at least more than three weeks if that's the case. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, kind of a kind of a shorter episode Mm -hmm. this week, but I think a good one in terms of what are the things as a business owner, what are the things you need to think of so that you can be gone for a week-long vacation, a two-week-long vacation, a month-long vacation, a weekend vacation? I I know people who own grocery stores or, you know, or the mom-and-pop shops itself that they're working six, seven, eight eight days a week. Yes, it it feels like that as a a business owner. What are we doing in those situations where, once again, like you can't take a weekend getaway without the business. Um, And again, it always goes back to like training the staff, having certain things in place, preparing the business to allow for you to be able to go and enjoy time off and be able to not worry that the business is is not going to still function without you. It's hard in the beginning, uh, but it is something that as part of your business plan and some of the things that you're putting in place, very important to to make sure those things are in place so that you can, who who says they, uh, I left the corporate job so that I can go work, you know, eight days a week uh, and still, and still, uh, you know, not have a life. It's like, that's, that's not the, that's not the goal uh, as being as a business owner. The so goal what? of being your own boss is to be able to do this kind of hey, stuff exactly. from time to time. So that's the idea. Um, speaking of paying the bills, we do also <laughs> want to mention our second sponsor, Sam Cohen with Attorneys First Insurance. Those of you that are longtime listeners know Sam writes Arizona Omissions Insurance Malpractice Coverage for attorneys and title companies all over the country. So if you are an attorney or a title company, or if you want to support the show and you know an attorney or a title company, Definitely refer them over to Sam at attorneysfirst.com or the website is attorneysfirst.com. Definitely support the Crushing Debt social media channels, the Curbelo Financial TikTok channel. Definitely. Uh, you know, one thing that'll help me get away on vacation is promoting the Patreon page. That's it. Come on. Although any money from Patreon doesn't fund my vacation, but it does allow the podcast to keep running That's while it. I'm gone. So uh, the Patreon page is a great way to support us. And uh, And listen to the uh, after talks where Sean and I are even more uh, uh, more not professional (laughs) in our situations. But yes, I would say any support to it. uh, We're trying to, you know, obviously provide a lot more content um, from a Patreon perspective, but it also allows us to be able to do more. Um, it is again financial yeah. literacy month, so like there's opportunities there to be able to give back to our patrons uh, and learn more about uh, again how to crush debt on a monthly basis. And speaking of social media, how many of you have noticed the new logo? Ah, the new logo! So proud of that, and it, it's one of those kind of things like, "Hey, mom, I made it." <laughs> <laughs> So the logo has been out for about a month now. So if you haven't noticed it yet, go ahead and check it out. Um, we didn't really make a huge change to it. Hey, the fact that you you you, you considered me a partner and just let me uh, put my nice logo out there itself, I'll take so it. The podcast logo now incorporates the Yesner Law and the Curbelo Financial logos both in them uh, at the bottom there. So go ahead and check it out. Let us know what you think. Where are you going on vacation? I'm going to Arizona. Arizona. Okay, so we, go, we're, we fly in and out of uh, Phoenix, and I guess I can say this because this episode will be out. Yeah. I'm kind of weird that way. I don't typically post stuff on social media while I'm out because I don't like people to know I'm away. That's a good idea. Um, That's so all right. I don't do that. But but by the time this comes out, we'll be back. Right. So we went to uh, we flew in and out of Phoenix. We went to Scottsdale to the Grand Canyon for a day. Nice. Um, uh, went to Sedona for a day. Beautiful. So we're, we're just kind of. 
driving around that area of of Arizona. My my wife wanted to take the boys on an airplane ride, and we decided Why Arizona's not? far enough away that it's a decent <laughs> airplane ride. I love it. I love it. So it's still it's still hot, and uh, and you can still enjoy the the weather it'll itself. Be cold at night. I've got to pack long sleeves and jeans really? for nighttime. Yeah, okay. gets right. into the. I, from what I understand, gets into the 40s and 50s at night. Ooh, It'll be in nice. the 80s and 90s during the day, but it's that dry hot. It's dry hot. It's a little different. It's not the yeah. humid hot. That it's not that that blanket of water that we we walk no, through every day. It's, <laughs> it's not like you step out of your front door and you're instantly sweating. So I'm glad. Again, I'm going to tell the future. You had a great time. I'm happy that you had a great time itself. And uh, you look good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm looking to the future already. For, for you look fantastic. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> So anyway, Financial Literacy Month especially is the best time to say we hope you have more money at the end of the month than month at the end of the money. And uh, we'll talk to you when I get back from Arizona in next week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. If you have questions that you think would make a great topic for a future episode, please email Sean or connect with us on social media. Sean Yesner and Yesner Law PL are Florida licensed attorneys. The information contained in this week's episode is not a substitute for legal advice. Your situation may differ, especially if you are located somewhere other than the state of Florida. If you have questions, please contact our office or contact a local attorney. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast.